Now, did you know which Aboriginal fashion label was the first in history to showcase at New York Fashion Week? And have you ever tried chocolates sourced from Australian Indigenous botanicals with the help of Aboriginal communities from around Australia? Well, today you'll find out. Tick Her starts right now. Tick Her, in association with Lift Women, inspiring female founders. Welcome to Tick Her. I'm Jamila Jello and it's my pleasure to be here to talk all things business with women who are making a difference. Now today we'll celebrate a pair of First Nation businesses putting legacy, compassion and skill at the top of their lists and delivering some of, some of the most impressive ideas to the market. Australia is home to the oldest continuing living culture in the entire world and our First Nation people and their stories play an incredibly important part within our communities as well as helping us understand our our futures. And before we get started, I'd like to acknowledge that this segment is being held on the traditional lands of the Wurundjeri Woiwurrung people, and I pay my respects to elders both past, present and emerging. And of course, Tick Her is the program where we celebrate the talents, skill and determination of women worldwide, bringing guests who have successfully achieved their business goals or taking the first steps of an exciting new venture by sharing it loud and saying it proud. Now, remember, while Whilst Lift Women is the presenting sponsor of today's discussion, all of the views and opinions are of course our own. Now over to my, neck, my first guest, we've got Natalie Cunningham, who is the director and designer of Native Swimwear, a fashion label that specialises in First Nation prints for swimwear and activewear to empower women of all nations to feel confident, comfortable and to live their best lives. Natalie, welcome to the show and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here today. Great. Now, I understand that storytelling is a big part of your business, but also for your culture at large. So what is the story of Native Swimwear and, of course, the story of you? Oh, OK. Um, so um, the story about Native Swimwear actually began um, I was a young mother at 21 years old and I, I've, I grew up on the Sunshine Coast and I actually I wanted to take my young son to the beach but I felt really self-conscious in my swimwear um, just about my whole body pretty much so I decided to um, go out and get some new swimwear. What I found out there um, really sucks your stomach in and enhanced your breastfeeding boobs but that was just targeted at people in their 50s or their 60s. It, it wasn't focused to people who needed that support with bright colours. So I just decided that I was just going to design um, something that young mums really need. Yeah, that's funky and cool. So that's how Native Swimwear be began. Of course. Now, each week on Ticker, we talk about the next phase along the entrepreneurial journey. So how did you validate your product within the market and what was that process like? Um, so for me to validate, I really thought about where do Australians get a lot of their influence from? And that's, you know, the United States. So I thought, well, why don't I just go straight to the top and I'll start there, um, which is actually what I do with a lot of things is I always start at the top and then I work back way, do the hard mm -hmm. thing of everything. Um, so yeah, I, um, I got in contact with um, some people about New York Fashion Week and they saw my products, saw how, you know, iconically Australian it is, you know, because I work with different people in remote Aboriginal communities. And they loved it and they invited me to New York Fashion Week. And so, yeah, that really validated um, my label once, you know, they'd seen that I'd been to New York Fashion Week. Yeah, of course. I mean, that's just one of your amazing achievements that you've had as a business. So what has it been like as a, a iconically Australian business in a space that has so many different and vastly, you know, different designs to yours? Um, it's been a real challenge originally. Like I started fashion designing back in um, 2006. Um, there was like very, very little um, Indigenous prints available. So what I was wanting to do was just, at the time wasn't ready. And even when I went to New York, they weren't ready for it. And what's really exciting is where we are today, it's, you know, the fashion is all about, um, you know, Indigenous influences, like you probably know, um, you know, my label stopped in David Jones, yeah. and you know, when big people like like David Jones are working with, you know, Indigenous companies like myself, you know, I think it's just fantastic because the name, like, it's getting out there, and you know, my Dreamtime stories that are on the um, swing tags. They're all about educating people. So when you buy one of, you know, my caftans or something, 
you're reading like the Dreamtime story from the artist who, you know, she might not be able to speak English, but it's all translated and that's another whole process that we do. But, you know, you're learning about, you know, snake vines as tourniquets and how, you know, they were used, you know, in like for medicinal purposes. And it's all about really learning from my culture or our Aboriginal culture and, um, yeah, just getting it, you know, using my platform to get it out there, educate the masses kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Now, can you touch on your current crowdfunding program and why it's important to your business, but also maybe businesses alike? Yeah, businesses, yeah, 100%. Um, so at the moment, I am doing crowdfunding and it's got a lot of different rewards. So a lot of people might like my swimwear or my silk caftans or whatever. So what I've got is I've actually got some rewards, so really awesome rewards, and they can start from $20 right up to $150, so everybody actually gets something. Mm -hmm. And what that is, it's about raising money so that I can grow my business. Currently, there is actually only me, and, I'm, and I do like 50 parts of the, you know, I'm wearing all these different caps. Oh, wow. So it's really hard. Like, I would love to employ some to help me with marketing and to you know because I don't I don't have a marketing degree and everything I've done you know the past 16 years I would have gone somewhere a lot you know a lot quicker had I had somebody to help me so basically just to you know get somebody to help me with PR and marketing and learn about profit margins and just all these different things that you know I've got a family behind me and I really need the, you know, the help to do these kinds of things and I've, yeah, it just, it would really help me to yeah. get some crowdfunding happening so that I can grow, you know, because my label is very, you know, it's popular, but because I've only got like 2,500 followers, like not enough people know about it and that's where PR and marketing could really help me. That sounds so exciting. Now, thank you so much for joining me, Natalie, and sharing us with your, sharing with us your story. Thank you so much for having me. Okay, now over to my next guest, we have Wadri woman Fiona Harrison, who is the founder and CEO of Chocolate on Purpose, Australia's very first Indigenous chocolate company. Not only do they deliver delicious specialty chocolate, but they also deliver real industry impact by encouraging and contributing to reconciliation in Australia by storytelling through chocolate. Fiona, thank you so much for joining me. How are you going today? Well, thank you. Thank you for having me. And you're the Morang. That's G'day in the Wiradjuri language. Oh, amazing. Thanks so much for sharing that with us. So let's start with your story and how it's led you to where you are with your business today. So it really goes a long way back, um, you know, with the assimilation policies of, yeah. the, of the Australian government. Um, you know, there was a time where for some of our old people, the only way they could keep their kids safe was to say that they weren't Aboriginal. And um, that's the story of my family. And with that choice, um, there came a lot of heartache and sadness because you literally were no longer allowed to have any contact with your, your family or your country. And there was a lot of sadness and, and anger um, in my family, which led to intergenerational trauma and myself a journey with complex post-traumatic stress disorder. And as part of that, I developed a panic um, disorder and I just discovered essential oils. And one morning I woke up mid panic attack and I used my oils and I was able to um, pull myself together to get myself and the kids ready for school later that morning. And I never had another panic attack. So I was really curious about the power of botanicals. And I went on and studied and met my good friend, Joe, who helps me in my business. And um, we went to a chocolate making course together. We were looking for a way to share um, the, the power of these botanicals with a wider audience. And during the chocolate course, the teacher said, we're going to do a black pepper and raspberry chocolate. And um, I looked at Joe and said, oh, black pepper, it's an essential oil. Maybe that's how we'll do it. And we were, um, you know, brainstorming uh, Amazonian superfoods, goji berries. And suddenly I just had one of these clangers drop where, you know, for me, it came from my ancestors. No, we'll be using bush food. My ancestors have used those for over 60,000 years. And that day the Bush Food Chocolate Range was born and the name of the business Chocolate On Purpose um, because we're on purpose to have an impact and uh, chocolate is our vehicle to deliver the mission. Of course. Now you're doing more than entering the market, just entering the market in general. You're entering the market with a new idea to make impact. So what impact are you trying to make and why? Yeah, so um, we, we believe that we create delicious chocolate experiences infused with a mission. So our business model delivers industry impact through the choices that we make. Um, 
to take you through some of those impacts, less than 2% of the providers in the Australian native food and botanical supply chain are Indigenous, um, despite the industry being built on the back of their knowledge. So we source our um, native edibles from Indigenous farmers wherever we can to increase their participation in their supply chain. Our forced labour in the cacao supply chain is rife. Uh, by choosing to source ethically grown chocolate, um, last year we contributed to eradicating 25,000 cases of child forced labour. Wow. Uh, palm oil, deforestation as a result of palm oil farming is displacing Indigenous communities, endangering, um, you know, further endangering endangered species of animals and um, really having an impact on global warming. So by choosing chocolate that doesn't contain palm oil, um, in just in one hour, we prevent 300 foot, we contribute to preventing 300 football fields of um, rainforest being cleared to plant new palm trees. Mm -hmm. So that stops carbon um, being released into the atmosphere. And um, in one day, we save the lives of 16 orangutans. I hear you're currently also crowdfunding. So what are you currently crowdfunding for? So um, with the crowdfunding, it's two pronged. Crowdfunding is all or nothing. So there's a, t a tipping target, and for us that's a seven and a half thousand dollars to buy some any a semi-automated machine. Yep. Uh, our cost of goods are expensive because the labour component is so great. So some automation will really help us to drive that down. And then the second part, once you reach that tipping goal of seven and a half, um, then the the money will be um, provided to be able to buy the machine, and then you can go for your stretch goal which is $12,000. I currently run an Indigenous chocolate tasting experience as a tourism Amazing. product in the village. And I would love to create a native garden um, so that my tourism experience will really be about the sights, the, the touch, the feel, the smell of Indigenous Australia mm. through that native garden. Oh, it's such a beautiful story and such an insightful story as well. Now, unfortunately, that's all we have time for. So thank you so much for joining me, Fiona, and we hope to talk again soon. Thank you.